All right. Good morning. People are joining, connecting to audio. They probably can't hear me. Awesome. There we go. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. We'll give it a few minutes for, as people join us. And uh, in the meantime, maybe put in the chat where you're uh, tuning in from today. I'm in uh, Bend, Oregon. And Tiana, Manchester, New Hampshire. Awesome. Good weather there, Tiana? No, it's cold <laughs> and rainy today. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had 16 degrees Fahrenheit before, I mean, the last month. But yesterday we were 70 degrees and people were back out on stand up paddle boards out on the river. And yet I was working. I had to get all the photos from friends. But oh, we got Sean. Yeah, of course, our speaker, Sean Bryant, Chile, UK, Shropshire, the gnome working from home. <laughs> That's going to be your tagline now, isn't it? Yeah. Or no, gnome with scarf. Yeah. It's not Right. Everybody's shy this morning. Or, well, I mean, it could be evening, is in the case of Sean. It's afternoon for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just gone 4 p.m. here. Yeah. We'll give it another minute. Apologize in advance. I've got a puppy that may run in. He could bring a squeaky toy. So I will try and be fast on the mute should this uh, emergency happen. Um, it is quite uh, entertaining, at least to him. I introduced him last night to a floor robot. So he likes cats. He does not like robots. The robot <laughs> freaked him out. So I even put his toy on the robot. He didn't think that was too funny at all and spent the next 10 minutes trying to figure out how to get his toy back from the robot. And he just waited it out till the battery died. So it's just one of those little floor mopping Robots gets all the puppy prints off of the uh, the wood floors. Excellent. I love I love it when technology is used effectively. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. It's uh, I got to put googly eyes on it though. I put uh, four inch googly eyes on those floor robots. Just uh, I can't look at a an automated thing like that without humanizing it. Nothing so, wrong with that. Yeah. All right, I think I think we can probably just get rolling and people can join in and then we have we'll have people watch the recording we announce it but. Uh, okay I've, I've got clicky control so you have clicky control. Go. Let it rip. Okay, here we are. All right, welcome to the Community conversation, my name is Sean Hurley i'll be your host we're joined by Sean Bryant and today we're gonna be discussing. Uh, Taking AutoCAD Mobile, part four. All right, next one. Oh wait, I'm sorry, this is my fault. Oh, I was, I was, okay. I was, I jumped, I caused it. Community conversations provide opportunities for engineers, designers, artists, and makers to meet in a safe, live, uh, virtual setting to uh, share expertise, get to know leaders in your field and grow your community network. They're always supported by an Autodesk community manager uh, to help guide the conversation, feed important insights back from the community to Autodesk, support participants in getting connected to the expertise you need. And I'm going to give you some links here so that you have uh, some resources here, as well as the link to the session. And uh, put that into the chat here, I'm doing double duty here. And I'll keep putting more in there as we go. Um, Let's go to the next one, Sean. Thank you. This is the fun part. This is the rules. This is uh, this is lines are muted uh, to reduce background noise, but we do invite you to turn on your cameras if you feel comfortable with that. Kind of gives us that in-person feeling of uh, meeting, you know, and seeing each other's reactions and faces. Um, if you have a question, Either raise your hand using the little Zoom bar down at the bottom on your right, or uh, type it in chat and we'll get to you as the, uh, the conversations are going. This is a conversation, so you know, feel free if you have something relevant to the uh, topic at hand to bring that up. The session is recorded, or will be, it is being recorded, and it'll be uploaded to this community conversation page. And I'll give you that right now. And uh, 
I'll also send out a, a notice with the link to the, the video. Next, please. The safe harbor statement. This is the, uh, the fun one from the lawyers. This basically says, if we make any forward looking statements talking about the future of the product or things that it should do, make only purchasing decisions based on the product as it is shipping today. So if Sean Bryant happens to say that AutoCAD in the future will be able to read your mind and draw what you're thinking, don't make a purchasing decision based on that. It may not happen. It would be cool, but uh, it may not happen. All right. Again, my name is Sean Hurley. I'm the engagement manager in Autodesk Community. I'm a geeky technologist. I'm based in beautiful Bend, Oregon, which is kind of like smack dab center of um, Oregon in the US in the mountains next to the river. So, and I got a puppy. So <laughs> that I had to get that warning again. It could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm Sean Bryant, director and owner of CAD FM Consultants over in a somewhat chilly UK today. Um, I'm an AutoCAD influencer. Some people joke that if you slice me in half, you will find AutoCAD running all the way down through the middle. Um, I'm based in Shropshire in the UK right now, um, kind of in between houses, long story, but we're hoping to buy a nice big house in East Yorkshire in the UK sometime soon. Awesome. We're not going to slice you in half to find out that. We'll take your word. No, no, that. don't do that. I want to go to AU with real people again this year. Awesome. Next that's, year. that's the hope for 2022. Let's hope so. Okay, do you want me to get cracking? Absolutely, let it rip. Okay, so we're going mobile with AutoCAD, as John quite rightly said earlier. Um, this is part four of four. So if you haven't seen the previous three parts, you might be playing catch up a little bit, but they're available if you wanna go and check that out. Uh, we're talking about syncing the updated mobile web, mobile and web data that you might create back to the desktop this time. So you've been out and about with AutoCAD Mobile or possibly use the AutoCAD web app. And what we're doing now is we're thinking about how do we get that information back to our AutoCAD on our desktop. So big white slide. Remember, you need to be signed into your Autodesk account ID for this to happen. So I'm gonna refresh your memories. I've done this on every part of this four part series. So. Are you signed into your Autodesk account, your Autodesk ID? So in AutoCAD, it's located in the Start tab when you open up AutoCAD on your desktop. And it's also located in the AutoCAD info bar as well. Now that information gives you your account details, your managing licenses, your purchase options. And if you go to accounts.autodesk.com, you can go in there even further, sign in and add information such as your contact details, if you're running an organization that perhaps you know helps people with AutoCAD like CAD FM Consultants does, you can put that information in there as well. The benefit of your Autodesk account stroke ID is it gives you access from the AutoCAD desktop. So you've got access to those two little icons there, which are your AutoCAD web and mobile folders. And they're on the quick access toolbar, as you can see, top left of your AutoCAD desktop screen. So quick refresher there. And once you're signed in, you've got access to two commands, save to web and mobile and open from web and mobile. And there's a quick driver install that you might need to set up there. It lasts about literally 30 seconds. Funnily enough, I was running an AutoCAD training course this week and I was running a new machine with AutoCAD on it and I had to install it. I didn't even have to stop training. I just clicked on it and it was done literally in less than 30 seconds. But those two commands are really important and you get access to them, like I said, through your Autodesk account, your ID. And what you can do is you can save your DWGs to the allocated cloud space that comes with your Autodesk ID and your AutoCAD subscription. And they can also be accessed with AutoCAD Web and AutoCAD Mobile, the web and mobile apps. And then you've got open from the web and mobile folders. And that allows for synchronization with web and mobile apps when you're out on site with your AutoCAD web or your AutoCAD mobile. So you can see there, you get a little dialog box, looks remarkably similar to your regular dialog boxes there, saving to AutoCAD web and mobile. And likewise, you can open from AutoCAD web and mobile. So those will pop up in your AutoCAD desktop app when you're running either of those two commands. 
So what we're talking about is synchronizing back to the desktop this time. We want to sync back to the desktop app from, in this case, AutoCAD Mobile. Now, I run AutoCAD Mobile either on my iPad or my iPhone. So I've got an iPhone 12 Pro Max and an iPad Pro right now. I haven't upgraded to the iPhone 13 yet as much as I would like to. But once it's installed either on your iPad or your iPhone, there are obviously other smartphones and tablet brands available. You can log in with your Autodesk account. And this is where that Autodesk account is really important. So if you look at this slide at the moment, you can see my email address at the top there where it says AutoCAD Web and Mobile, and you've got my CAD FM Consult email address. So what you've got is the ability to log in, and these are snapshots from my phone screen. So I log in and I can go, oh, there's my folder with the drawings that I need. So that's my app, it's actually my Autodesk University 2021 data set that I used for the class that I did for AU 2021. Look, I was a speaker at AU 2021, you can tell, right? And you just go into the folder and find your drawing as you would normally. Now that's on an iPhone and Looking at my screen, it's roughly about the same size as my iPhone screen that I've got here at home. So you can see that the resolution's good and you can get into your drawings fairly quickly and easily. So what we've got here is a phone screen and all phones use those finger gestures where you can zoom in and zoom out. And the whole idea is that you zoom into the area that you wanna work on. So I've got some text there in a floor plan and I can literally single tap with my finger on that text and that will allow me to select the text like that. And then to edit the text, I just double tap it and I get a little box pop up. There's the text. The 150 there is the height of the text. It behaves just like multi-line text. So I can edit my text height and that's done in that particular drawing. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail. I've done a simple text height edit. That's all I've done. You can go in, you'll notice there's various commands there on the screenshots there from my phone, where you've got things like measure, draw, erase, copy. The iconography on the mobile app is exactly the same as the iconography on your desktop app, so that you recognize these commands when you're working in different environments. So you've got that core AutoCAD technology there for you. So one thing that I do, and this is a real belt and braces approach when I come out of the mobile app, once I've made the changes, I make sure that I go through a signing out three step process. Now, this might be a bit of overkill. It probably is. But I always make sure that I do this. And that one of the reasons I do this is I really hate being left signed into apps on my iPad and my iPhone. I always tend to sign out and then sign back in again. It's just a slightly OCD kind of thing, maybe. But what, what I do is I hit that little cross over on the left there, highlighted by that nice Christmassy green kind of arrow. And it says, do you want to save and continue? So, yes, I do want to save. So I save the drawing at the prompt. But then what I do is I kind of go all the way back. I go back to all files and then I sign out, as you can see on the right hand side there, from the AutoCAD mobile app. So now I know that drawing is definitely saved. And the reason I know it's been saved is I've saved it, but I've also closed the app after I've saved it to avoid me potentially overwriting a version of the drawing that I might not have saved yet. So that's my little kind of CAD manager OCD thing. I always sign out to make sure that I don't make any changes to the wrong drawing. It's so easy. You can be looking at a drawing on something like an iPad and you think to yourself, oh, I'll make some changes to that. And you suddenly realize that you've made changes to the wrong drawing. It's easily done. You've got undo to fix it, but just to be on the safe side, just sign out with that three-step process. It's just something that I do. I recommend it. It's up to you on that one. You're cool. So when you open the revised DWG in the AutoCAD desktop app, so you can see there, anybody that wants to call me out, yes, that is AutoCAD 2021 and it should be AutoCAD 2022. I think I grabbed that screenshot of AutoCAD from my AU 2021 or AU 2020 even data set. So apologies for not having the appropriate version of AutoCAD. But the idea is, is that you open up the drawing in the desktop app. You can see the name of the drawing is the same on the file tab there. You're signed into your Autodesk account, you access the web and mobile folders, and you open up the drawing, and there's your break room text where you edited the height of the text. And you can then check those changes that you made to the drawing 
while you were out using AutoCAD Mobile on site. So you might actually have been in that particular room in that building, making the necessary changes. You don't have to take all those paper drawings with you anymore in the tube like we used to many years ago. You don't have to roll them out on the bonnet stroke hood of your car and hold them down with house bricks anymore. The whole idea is that you've gone totally electronic and you've removed that need for paper, but also more importantly, You've improved your workflow and your process here because this could actually happen in real time. Somebody could be working with the mobile app on site, sending the changes to you by saving the drawing in the mobile app. You then open up the drawing from the web and mobile folders. You've got the most up-to-date drawing and you can check those changes. That's the important bit. So what we've also got is the AutoCAD web app. Now, the AutoCAD web app, again, is another application that is available with your AutoCAD subscription. So if you've got AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT on subscription, you can get AutoCAD web and AutoCAD mobile as part of that subscription. They're already there. You just need to sign into them with your Autodesk account ID. So let's have a look at the AutoCAD web app. Now, this runs in a browser, and it is literally AutoCAD in a browser. You can see the link there in the big red letters, web.autocad.com. And I can remember when Autodesk mentioned this to me way back of an AU, I can't remember now, can't even remember which one it was. And they said, oh, we're thinking about putting AutoCAD into a web browser. And I was like, that's really cool. Because it means that you can literally run your AutoCAD anywhere. You could be in an internet cafe in outer Mongolia and you could still get access to your drawings. What a cool idea. Now it's browser-based and predominantly Google Chrome tends to be the best browser to use the AutoCAD web app with. However, I've been running it now for about the last 12 months on the new Microsoft Edge Chromium version. And I have to say it works very well on that too. But the best bit about this is it's quick access. You're not waiting for AutoCAD to boot up. You're not waiting for big hefty drawings to load up either because it's all cloud-based. So as long as you've got a decent internet connection, you can jump into it in something like a larger format tablet, an iPad Pro in my case. You can perhaps be hot desking somewhere, or even better still, you're sitting there in a client meeting with the client and you just say, oh, can I just jump onto your browser on your computer, please? You can show them the latest drawings because you've loaded them up to your AutoCAD web and mobile folders before you went to the meeting. Larger smartphones, we've got browsers on those. You can jump into AutoCAD web that way too. I personally tend to use AutoCAD Mobile on my phone and I use AutoCAD Web on my iPad Pro because it's a slightly larger format screen. But again, horses for courses, your choice. So what we can do with AutoCAD Web is we can utilize this wonderful traces technology that I mentioned in part three. We can use that to sync our DWG changes. So we've gone to good old web.autocad.com, not that I'm stressing that HTTP address at all, and you're logged in using your Autodesk ID. Now, the web and mobile folders are AutoCAD specific. So the whole idea there is it's called AutoCAD Web and Mobile. And what you're doing there is you're jumping in and there's other providers as well. So what Autodesk have done is really, really savvy here. Not only have they given you the web and mobile folders using your Autodesk account via your subscription, but also don't forget, you might be using a different storage provider. Now I use OneDrive all the time for a lot of work that I do, purely because I, I need space. Cloud gives me loads of space to put my files in. So I use OneDrive and the whole idea there is I can just add a storage provider. You'll notice there's a OneDrive link there on the left underneath AutoCAD Web and Mobile. And that's my OneDrive link to my OneDrive folders, again, in the cloud that the lovely Microsoft provide me with. And there's the folder there. I just jump into the appropriate subfolder. And again, we'll talk a little bit about managing folders as we get to the end of this presentation anyway. But the whole idea is you've got the ability, as you can see in the web and mobile folders there, to upload files. You can set up new folders. You can set up subfolders. You can basically create new drawings from the AutoCAD web app and the AutoCAD mobile app if you need to. So these traces are part of the new AutoCAD web app interface. Now I will stress, if you look at my AutoCAD web app screen, there is a big blue beta sticky there next to the AutoCAD icon. Now be aware I'm a beta tester for AutoCAD. So going back to the safe harbor statement, just be aware, just check that the functionality is there 
in the product before you commit to purchasing, as Sean Hurley quite rightly said at the beginning of the presentation. So the traces, as I said, are part of the new AutoCAD web interface. They came in with the 2022 version of the product. And you can add a trace using this trace functionality. So you go to traces on the little bar on the left-hand side in the AutoCAD web app. And what we're doing there is we're adding trace elements to the drawing. So you'll notice when you go into traces and create a new trace, you get that blue highlight around your AutoCAD screen. And what's happening there is it gives it a name, which is highly original, trace two in my case. And then what you want to do is add the information while you're in that trace. So my trace elements there are a revision cloud and some text. And I'm using the draw and annotate tools in the AutoCAD web app to add that information. But what you've got to realize here is that drawing is totally mobile. It's not in your AutoCAD desktop right now. It could be on an iPad Pro somewhere on site while you're working through some snagging in this floor plan, for example. So what we're doing is we're checking the changes in our trace. We're making sure that they're what we need and we're making sure that we want to add them to the drawing. So we check any changes, we make sure of the data. So what I'm asking there is for somebody to check the room numbers for occupancy. So those room numbers might need to change depending on which departments using those conference rooms. I think they're small conference rooms maybe there or possibly interview rooms. And what you're doing is you're renaming the trace as well. You make sure that it's consistent with what you're doing. So in my case, I've called it room numbers. You can then close the trace and it returns you to either the model tab or the layout tab in the drawing in the web app. I can add new traces. There's an option to do that. I can add as many as I like and they can be added at any time when you're in the web app and then you save the drawing. So once the drawing is saved, this is where you can synchronize the information from the cloud again. So the drawing has been saved in the web app. You can do the same in the mobile app. The workflow is pretty similar. So what you're doing now is you've gone back to the office, you boot up AutoCAD on your desktop machine, you open up the same DWG file from the web and mobile folders or your cloud provision, like my OneDrive that you saw in the web app. You then jump to the Collaborate tab. There's our Collaborate tab in the AutoCAD desktop. And that's just standard, just move along the ribbon, click on collaborate, and there's your traces palette. So you click on traces palette, and there's the palette there, and it will say, hey, somebody's put a room numbers trace in this drawing while they were in the web app, or as I said earlier, the mobile app. So you can locate that trace really quickly. And then when you click on it, surprise, surprise, it looks exactly like it does in the web app or the mobile app. You get that blue highlight around the relevant space that you're working in, either model or layer. And once you've selected that trace, it lets you know what's going on by displaying the content of that particular trace. So there's my room numbers there. What I would do now is I'd obviously check those room numbers, update the drawing accordingly, go through the information that is in the trace. And then what I would do there is close the trace by clicking on the little green tick, save the drawing to the next revision and I'm done. So then I can select that trace once I'm done, go to the traces palette, delete it because I don't need it anymore. I've done the work on the drawing and then just make sure that that drawing is saved. Now, when I'm working with these web and mobile folders, we need to think about structures and how those folder structures work in the cloud. Because one of the things that I found, and I'm, I'm utterly guilty of this, is I'll just kind of go, oh, I need to save that to web and mobile. I need to save that to OneDrive. And I'll just hit save as and just drop it in the main sort of root folder, either in the web and mobile folders or in my OneDrive folder. And that's not really where you want to be going. You want to make sure that you're accurate with this. So let's take a look at working with the web and mobile folders first. That's really important. So what we do, we sanity check that everything is complete in that particular revision, that particular version of the drawing. So we check all the updates. We make sure that we've got all the information on the drawing and it's all complete. And then we're going to save the DWG file, in this case, to the web and mobile folders. So I'm going to go up there. It's, one, it's the one that looks like a little phone, a little tablet with the blue arrow. And that's the save to web mobile command. So I save that. And there's the dialog box, there's the subfolder. So my subfolder in this case is community conversations, go mobile with AutoCAD. And there's the drawing that I'm saving. So it's A001-1031 Southeast Madison, 
M stands for metric, floor plans and details. So that is then saved into that particular folder. But what I'm doing, you'll notice I've got some subfolders. Don't just dump it into the AutoCAD web and mobile folder because that's in essence like your root drive, like your C drive. You don't really want to go there. You want to create subfolders. And then same with OneDrive as well. You want to make sure that you do the same thing. You want to make sure that you sanity check that everything's done. There's nothing worse than hitting that save button and realizing, oh, I've got to go and save it again. Do that sanity check. It's always worth doing. And what we're going to do, we're going to save the DWG file. Now, I use OneDrive all the time. There's Google Drive. There's lots of them out there, Box, Dropbox, et cetera. And I've been using OneDrive for some time. And the reason I kind of transferred everything over to OneDrive is it works beautifully in the Microsoft ecosystem. Because what I've got is there's my OneDrive folder right there. So I just go to Save Drawing As. I just hit Save As on the quick access toolbar, and there's my OneDrive folder waiting for me to save that file. So I've got the same usual dialog box, save as dialog box, but I'm saving it to a cloud-based location. And for me, that just makes my life easier because it's all in my Windows OS, my Microsoft ecosystem. And also what's more important there as well is I've got OneDrive on my iPad, I've got OneDrive on my phone. I can go and find those files that are in my OneDrive account or my OneDrive subfolders as well. So there's the file there and it literally, it's just save as, but I'm just putting it in a different location. So what happens then is once you've saved that file, either to the web and mobile or to the OneCloud, sorry, OneCloud, OneDrive even, and what we want to do is make sure that those structures are available to us. Now, it's very, very simple, really. It's, it's, you're kind of working in the same sort of methodology that you would work on any project. Because what you're doing is you're building up a folder structure. It's just in a different location. And that location is the cloud. Now, the one thing I will say, and this was discussed in the AutoCAD classroom training that I did this week, is there was a couple of people there that worked for highly sensitive organizations and they didn't have access to the cloud per se, the, the big cloud in the outside world. They weren't allowed to because obviously permissions were locked down. Now, that's an issue, but there's nothing to stop you having an internal cloud, an internal intranet, extranet kind of environment. So potentially they could have that inside their firewall in their local server structure if they needed to. So potentially a storage provider, especially with something like OneDrive could be used instead of the AutoCAD web and mobile folders, which are obviously going out to a cloud-based server somewhere that is owned by Autodesk. But if you go with something like OneDrive, that can be locked down quite tightly because it's all in the Microsoft ecosystem. And they can make sure that obviously their DWG files are in a safe place. So AutoCAD web and mobile, like I said, is the Autodesk cloud-based space for AutoCAD. So we've got there web and mobile. I'm in the web app. There's the link there. I click. There is the community conversation subfolder. And again, what I'm saying here is these are really simple subfolders, by the way. They're nothing complex. And I put the files in that subfolder. And the nice thing about the web app, if you look at the top there, it shows you which subfolder or subfolders you are drilling down to to find your drawings. This one is obviously linked to the AutoCAD subscription it's linked to your Autodesk ID. So you're using the web and mobile folder location in this particular case. Now, if I jumped into say the web app again and I was using my cloud provider, in my case, OneDrive, that's linked to my cloud subscription with my Microsoft OneDrive. And you'll see there, I've gone into AutoCAD web app again, there we go. There's OneDrive like that. And there's my folder there and there's my drawing there. So it, again, I'm drilling down the usual folder structure. It's just in a different location. So this allows me to synchronize those drawings. That's the important bit because I can save them to that different location. But more importantly, I can also relocate those files if I need to. They might have to come back onto my C drive on my laptop, my desktop machine for a particular reason, but I can still save them back out again. And it's all to do with folder structure, file naming philosophy, revision, which revision it is, revision ABC, revision one, two, three. It, all that facility is there. You're not just stuck with one particular space. You can create those subfolders. And as I said, with the web app and the mobile app, you can upload existing drawings that are on your C drive to the cloud. You can create new folders, new subfolders, 
You can even create new drawings using either the mobile app or the web app too. So there's a whole different methodology there, but it's using all of that core AutoCAD technology. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of blatant self-promotion now. Um, AU 2021, I just wanna give you my class links. The past four sessions in the community conversations have been loosely based around my AU 2021 class. Did I tell you? I was an AU 2021 speaker. Now, the class number's there for you. So if you want to watch back on the recording, you can check the class number there. Go and find it on the AU website. You can watch the video and et cetera, et cetera. I'll leave you to it. But because of the way that AU has been over the last couple of years, it's been virtual. What I've done as well is I've added a whole load of additional materials content. So that YouTube link there will take you to the additional part of the class. And it's all about how you work with the web app and sync the drawings back to the desktop app. So if you want to check out that YouTube link, you can. And obviously, well, most of you know where I am as well. You can find me on LinkedIn, etc. Just pop me a message. I'm happy to provide you with the appropriate links to either the YouTube video or my AU class as well. One more thing that I will bring in, it's from AU last year, or this year, this year even. And I just want to get across a little quote that I put into that particular AU class this year. And it's all about the fact that we are using a lot more mobile technology. And when you combine that with things like the web app and the mobile app, you've got the most amazing mobility. Everything is going mobile. And the whole idea of that is that you can remove that need to take all that paper, that archaic way that we used to take drawings around, and the mobility is there but you can utilize your core AutoCAD technology with that mobility. So now you've got some really seamless workflows and all your processes when you're collaborating with people are there for you with your CAD team, but also with people like stakeholders and clients as well. There's nothing to stop you talking to somebody, like I said, when you're in a client meeting and use the web app, you can jump into the AutoCAD web app and say, here's the latest drawing. So all of the AutoCAD apps, not just the desktop app, give you that incredible amount of flexibility. So you can quite literally now make anything anywhere to use a phrase that Autodesk have often used. I've kind of tweaked it slightly. But the idea being that we want to make sure that all of that AutoCAD technology is rounded. You're not just stuck at your desk all the time anymore. You can actually take your drawings with you and go completely mobile. And that winds it up for today, folks. Awesome, Sean. I was going to find your link in the presentation so I could uh, paste it into the chat. If Excellent. you could do that while I'm closing, that would be awesome. Just to, you know, from yeah, your, your I, I can do that before we close. I'm more yeah. than happy to do that. Or email it to me and I can put it with the notice of the uh, recording. So That would be fine. I, I can do that if need be. That's fine. And, and just for everybody's awareness, there is a conversation thing. Every, every, every class has a threaded conversation view that might be a great place for it. so if somebody watches this you know this recording they can ask questions I mean um, of course there's time you know can't ask in 10 years because Sean may be off you know living on Mars by then Australia Sean, right, hopefully, not by me then. <laughs> yeah so all right let's let's uh let's wrap this up don't leave I do have a important uh, little survey link and some information for you and I'll paste it the community links again that I pasted earlier for those that weren't in then. Um, anyway, uh, I got two final slides. If you're looking for other ways to connect and engage with the Autodesk community, um, you can explore the many ways to connect um, with to the Autodesk community, including the global network of user groups in the Autodesk group network, our industry focused communities helping colleagues solve business challenges together, the Autodesk forums, of course, the student community and staying connected with us on Twitter and our, our blog now. So let me give you those links again, and I will also email those out. Um, I also have a link that helps us figure out what we're going to, you know, how do we do our community conversations? How do we make it better for you? What kind of content you want, you want in the future? Because we're going to be relaunching these even on a larger scale uh, in the first of the next year. So we have two more community conversations. We have Danya coming up in another hour um, with Revit families. And then we have Dynamo next week on the 9th of December. And then we're gonna have a break until January. So watch that event calendar. All right, there is the 
Oh, I thought I did. There we go. Oh, no, I gave you the wrong one. Sorry. Let me give you the survey. I'm multitasking. Thanks. Thank you for attending today. So we can go to the next slide. There we go. Perfect. Um, I want to thank you for attending the community conversation today. And uh, like I said, we welcome your feedback on that survey. Um, continue to stay connected in the Autodesk community, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks again. And thanks, Sean. And Tiana. You're welcome. And More yeah. than welcome. More than welcome. Appreciate it. There's a lot of good information there. Um, definitely uh, get that get that link. Um, throw that in the uh, the uh, the session notes. Would be good. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll I'll jump on and put that in the session notes for the YouTube link. That's fine. No worries at all. I'll make sure that happens today. Yeah, good information to follow up on. So um, I appreciate uh, everybody uh, attending the the uh, part four. And if you haven't seen the others, you should go look them. They they are out on YouTube as well as uh, you can find the links within this class and on the community conversation page. So thank you very much.